Good morning. Today is the big day. I am attending Interbeat 2023, and the important thing is, as the host, Small Ray. I mean, uh, some sort of influencer position, some kind of stuff. Oh, today is cold. I am super excited, super pumped to see the videography-related companies. I can experience the world filmmaking trend, some, some kind of stuff. And also, I want to see how this lens performs during you know, this event, during this vlog. This is Lumix S 14 to 20 mm f4 to 5.6 on Lumix S52X. So I want to test how this performs. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to be interviewed by media reporters and you know assist the small rig during this event as the influencer can say I got to maybe hopefully I want to vlog during this event so I don't know when I can shoot and what I can shoot but I'm gonna you know do my best as much as possible how's it going guys and thank you for coming back to this channel again so I've been using the Lumix S5 to, oh yeah, I'm using that Lumix S52X, which I am using right now. I'm renting this from Lumix, and I am using this a lot for vlogging, traveling, and client shooting works. Every time I bring this Lumix S52X out, and when that, I'm using this Lumix S14 to 28 mil f4 to 5.6 most because look at this size it's so small and it's light but this has super wide 14 to the natural focal length 28 mil this works so amazing in all scenarios in all you know situations locations so today is Lumix video don't worry i'm gonna post a lot of sony you know contents later but today is about Lumix and for Lumix user i want to recommend this Lumix 14 to 28 mil because it's so good. This is perfect, versatile, wide angle zoom lens for Lumix S52 or Lumix S52X. So you gotta check this out. Okay, before you get into this video, please hit the subscribe if you haven't to grow this channel. I need your support. This video is brought to you by Artlist. Okay, first, let's see the overall spec of this lens. So this has 14 to 20 a mil and f4 to 5.6. It weighed about 0.76 pound, 345 gram, but the filter size is 77 mil. So it's not that like thin. It has like a legit amount of like, what do you call that? Studio, legit amount of studio. And this has 15 centimeter minimum focus distance. So I mentioned a little, but it's so light, so small, but it got good grip, like holding feel because of this uh, 77 mil filter size. I feel so secure when I grab this lens. And biggest feature of this lens is its inner zoom. So it doesn't extend just like this. It's very helpful for you know, shooting on gimbal. And also the glass isn't curved i mean technically it's curved but the surface of this lens is flat so you can put any filter on this lens and those rings are a little unique i mean this zoom ring is a little heavy like it has too much pressure on it so yeah you know it doesn't move by itself if uh, something hits this zoom ring it's good but if you want to do something like a you know quick a quick focal length change from like a 14 to 20 mil you know you do that a lot you uh, when you vlogging right but you it's a little hard to do that like 14 28 14 28 you can do that but it's gonna you know make the shake when you do that so I wish you know it was a little lighter focus ring is also heavy but I think it's great you know you can have a precise focus control by this ring. So yeah, I love it. And other thing is very simple, just one switch AF, MF. So except the zoom ring, I guess this is well designed for shooting videos, especially the, you know, inner zoom and the filter shape, you know, it's not curved, flat shape. At this point already, I can say this is 
very good option for go-to lens for Lumix cameras. So now let's talk about the usability. 14 to 20 mil as sweet spot. You know, 14 mil can produce this kind of huge dynamic scene, dynamic view. So you can put a lot of things in the frame and it's so easy to tell, you know, the information like uh, where you are at and what you are doing at that moment. You can have those without making any effort. You know, 14 is so wide, so you don't have to extend your arm like this, you know, to film yourself with a background, you know, to tell the story, to tell the information. Just, you know, holding the camera casually like this, that solves everything. But this got 28 mil, which is very close to the natural uh, you know, human eyes perspective. So it can shoot portrait, b-roll, and some cinematic shots. And if you use APS-C crop 1.5, maybe 1.6 in Lumix, I don't know, maybe somewhere around that 1.5, 1.6 times crop. So 28 mil times about 1.5 is about 42 mil. So technically, this has 14 to 42 mil. You know, you can cover the, the photo side with that APS-C crop mode, but you, you can't have wider focal length than that lens already has. So that's why I said 14 to 20 mm is a sweet spot. But the biggest cons of this lens is that the aperture changes when you change the focal length. So it changes like when it's 14 mm it's f4 and when it's uh, 18 mm it's gonna be f4.5 and when it's 24 mm it's f5 28 mm 5.6. So eventually you're gonna have to use f5.6 at 28 mm. So maybe you are worrying about the bucket, right? But if you use 28 mm on APC crop mode and f5.6, you can have this amount of bucket. Don't you think it's enough as the wide angle zoom lens? And like I said, this has 15 centimeter minimum focus distance. So if you get close to the subject, you can have this melting uh, background bokeh world. Also the big detail is available like this. So this can be the super wide angle lens and a tight lens depending on how you shoot. This works amazingly in many different situations and locations. Not only light and small, the usability is on fire. Okay now, let's talk about the image quality. So when it comes to the wide angle zoom lens, those two things come together, distortion and vignette. So about distortion, it's very close to the natural look. Lines are straight, not curved weirdly, just you know, wide angle look. I don't have any complaints about this distortion reduction ability, but sometimes corners are wobbling when I walk. Maybe IBIS might be related. Like I remember that I said like similar thing in a S5 II review video. You know, IBIS works so fantastic, but corners are kind of you know shaking, wobbling. So maybe this is not you know this lens's fault. So maybe the connection between 14 mil and the IBIS is not that well. So flare and ghost, I see them a lot when it's backlight situation, but there is not a degradation of image quality, just a flare and ghost. I think it depends on your preference. Like I like those flares and ghost personally, and it can make the kind of an emotional cinematic vibe, you know what I mean? But if you want to shoot the backlight situation very clean without a flare and ghost, maybe you might not like it. Also, it's gonna be blurry around the light source like this, but also it depends on your preference. Me, personally, I like it. So the sharpness is about like medium. It's not too sharp, but not too soft, very average. But the detail is captured sharp and clean, but the overall feel is very gentle. Even there's a super strong sunlight, everything is not harsh. Well, I guess it's very easy to handle and easy to use. So the color, very Lumix color. The natural color depiction quality, like a orange and yellow and blue is so high, but it tends to shift to yellow a little under the, you know, artificial, lighting environment, I mean the inside. So, autofocus and image stabilization. This is Lumix genuine lens, so it can bring the, you know, max autofocus ability, you know, out from the camera. The genuine connection is so strong. It's so fast and so accurate and super reliable. Plus 14 to 28 mil with a slow aperture make autofocus, you know, even better. 
if the autofocus isn't work a little, maybe you can't notice it. So IBIS, like I said, when it's 14 mil, there was a, you know, wobbling corners, but stabilization itself is fantastic. Almost no shake. It's like a shooting on a gimbal. Okay, this is it. How was it? Do you have this lens or you don't have this lens? I don't know, but you gotta have this lens if you're using Lumix cameras, especially S5 II and S5 II X. And you know what? This is not that you know super expensive. It's about like eight hundred dollars. So I definitely can recommend this to all of you, all of you guys who are using Lumix cameras. And especially, I am positive that this is a great option for your go-to lens for your first Lumix lens. Easiness is most important nowadays. Easiness is most important for uh, keep doing, keep trying. Especially if you wanna fight, if you wanna battle in this social media game, it's gonna be easy. The process has to be easy. So you gotta check this lens out. Okay, this is it. If you have any questions, just shoot me anytime, anywhere. And if you like this video, show me a thumb and then hit the subscribe. Also, you gotta check the Lumix cameras and lenses. I'm gonna you know, put the link in the below. But this is not sponsored by Lomix. Don't worry. I will see you in the next video. Ciao,